Good evening. I'll call uh, the April 28th meeting of the City of Clovis Planning Commission to order. Uh, members of the public are encouraged to participate in the meetings by one, accessing the website on the city's website, two, by providing written comment at the same website, three, participating by phone, or four, coming to the Planning Commission meeting in person. Call the meeting to order and ask that Commissioner Hatcher lead us in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Amy. Have a call to order, or the, I'm sorry, roll call, please. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Antuna? Here. Commissioner Bedstead is absent. Commissioner Cunningham? Here. Commissioner Hatcher? Here. And uh, Chair Hinkle is absent. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking for an approval to the minutes of the meeting on March 24th. Motion to approve minutes uh, for the meeting of March 24th. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And that sounds like it's unanimous. Yep. So we'll move on to the Commission Secretary comments. Uh, I do have a brief uh, comment uh, this evening. Um, uh, we have a little bit of bad news. So our very own Kelsey George um, is no longer working with us. She's here in the audience uh, with us. Um, she's moving on to bigger and better things, you know, um, leaving us behind. But she's going to be uh, going to the private sector, and she'll be their newest senior planner. So uh, we'll wish you well, and good luck, and we're going to miss you. Yes, definitely. We'll, we will miss you, Kelsey. You were a, a great addition to our team and wish you all the success in the world in your new endeavor. Congratulations. And that's it? And that's it. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to Commissioner comments. No one. We're all just happy as little clams, so we'll move on. <coughs> Get into public comments. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on any matter within the Planning Commission's jurisdiction that is not on the agenda. In order for everyone to be heard, please limit your comments to five minutes or less or 10 minutes per topic. Anyone wishing to be placed on the agenda for a specific topic should contact Planning Division and submit correspondence at least 10 days before the desired date of appearance. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak? Anyone online? There are none. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to public hearings. Item number one. Let's see here. Yes. Item number one is consider approval of resolution SPR 2001 018A2, a request to approve a slight site plan review for the construction of a new 2,500 square foot visitor center for the Botanical Garden located at 945 North Clovis Avenue. Clovis Botanical Garden, Ann Clements, applicant, City of Clovis owner, and Dwight Kroll, representative. Our staff on this will be Lily Cha. Lily? Thank you, uh, Chair for term. Um, good evening, Commissioners. Um, as indicated, uh, we are here this evening requesting approval of SPR 2001-18A2, and this is the Botanical Gardens request for a new visitor center as well as some minor site modifications. Here representing the project this evening is Anne Clemens with the Botanical Garden Committee and some of the committee members, and Dwight Kroll, uh, the applicant's representative who, and former PDS director as well as Arthur Dyson, who is the architect. So the Botanical Gardens it encompasses about four acres of property, city-owned city property, that is situated north of the Dry Creek Park. Uh, Dry Creek Park is located at the northeast corner of Clovis and Alluvial Avenues. The property is designated for park and is zoned open space. So 
little bit of history on the Botanical Garden. It was first approved by the City Council in 2001. They had their first groundbreaking in 2002, and they were officially open to the public in 2004. It was in 2011 that the City Council approved an expansion of the garden, adding an additional 3,000 square feet and some additional site features. So the expansion was memorialized with an updated agreement with the city as well as SPR 2001-18A. This was the site plan review that was approved. Again, it memorialized the footprint of the garden, uh, several site features including an amphitheater, shade structure, classrooms, an office building, and a visitor center, as well as uh, additional parking. Although the garden had expanded into this new, new area, the site features um, as identified were not constructed because of some funding issues. So between now and then, or then and now, uh, the, garden, uh, the garden's committee was able to raise enough funds to construct a new visitor center, hence why we are here this, here this evening. So currently, the committee members operate from an on-site mobile office, which will be removed after completion of this building. The site plan as proposed uh, is shown here on this slide. There's a 2,500 square foot visitor center highlighted in red. Uh, the relocation of the iconic um, poppy entry gate, uh, it'll be shifted to the east a little bit to align better with the building and a new concrete walk that will provide a more direct path from the city sidewalk to the garden entry. This is the, uh, these are the elevations of the proposed building. It's, as you can see, it's, very, it's a very unique building, one of a kind. Um, again, the building is 2,500 square feet and at its tallest peak, it's, uh, no, it's just a little bit above 25 feet. Here are the northeast and northwest elevations. So the building was designed by Arthur Dyson. Um, he has some pretty iconic uh, buildings uh, around the Central Valley, uh, some of which include University High and the Woodward Regional Library. As you can tell, his buildings are all unique and one of a kind. The architecture was described to me as an organic architecture uh, that promotes harmony between human habitation and the natural world. Uh, this is the architectural philosophy of Mr. Dyson. The building materials of this uh, building here are made up of glass, metal, concrete, and concrete. And this is in response to the harsh and dry climate of the Central Valley. This is the entry to the building, which is facing the south side. And this is looking east towards the building. And later on, Dwight will uh, play a video of a walkthrough of the building for you. So staff was able to make the required findings to approve the site plan request. However, we did add a condition of approval requiring that the parking be addressed. Um, this, con this is listed as condition 10 in the attached conditions of approval. The condition requires that parking is provided per that previously approved site plan re uh, review amendment uh, application that, um, that was uh, a couple of slides ago. Um, the SPR requires that parking is provided at one space for every 5,000 square feet of active area. And so a total of 39 additional parking stalls to the existing 49 stalls already uh, was required. The site plan uh, uh, that's under review now uh, does not incorporate any additional parking. And the applicant is requesting a deferment of the parking requirement to work with staff on uh, a parking plan and how parking could be calculated. And so uh, staff did incorporate this, uh, this modified, a modified condition of approval addressing the deferment of the parking. 
and that's here in this next slide here. So we're modifying condition number 10 to read uh, parking to be provided as identified in the 2011 site plan approval or otherwise approved by, city, by the city of Clovis. So the applicant shall have one year from the date of occupancy of the new building to provide parking approval. And then uh, the applicant did request or, and has worked with public utilities and is requesting this modification to con condition number 50 to include uh, working with the public utilities director on a feasible alternative design. And this was confirmed with uh, public utilities. So with that, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission uh, recommend approval of the project uh, to the City Council, including the modifications of conditions 10 and 50. This concludes my report, and I am open for questions. Thank you, Lily. Any questions for staff? Just a quick one from me, Lily, the, and it addresses my concern on the parking. Uh, having, I live in the general area out there, and any weekend in Clement weather, uh, if you go on by, parking is at a real premium. Uh, folks park, I've seen them where they park out on the street all the way up to Nees Avenue. Uh, so I'm sure we'll be, we'll be working with the applicant and make sure those are addressed because I see it getting, I don't see it getting less crowded. Yes, um, and I think Dwight will be providing some insight on what their request may look like. I can hardly wait. Thank <laughs> you. All right, India, no other questions. Uh, and I guess now we'll hear from the applicant, uh, Mr. Kroll. Thank you, uh, Chair Pro Tim Cunningham, members of the Planning Commission. It's um, interesting to be on this side of the counter for a change. And uh, uh, I, I would say Dwight Kroll, uh, private citizen, 13644 Milverton Road, Prather, California, um, me. Um, I, I'd like to start by, by wholeheartedly saying I, I really appreciate working with the staff here. and. Um, this is an exciting project. I was contacted by the Botanical Gardens uh, indicating that uh, they had received a donation for this building that they had been planning for quite some time. Uh, so this year was pretty monumental for the uh, Botanical Garden. Uh, it's their 20th anniversary of operation and it's also the year that they're gonna get a permanent or they have the ability to get a permanent facility. Uh, Lily did ind indicate we have folks from the Botanical Garden here. We have Pat Wynn and, um, uh, huh? <laughs> and Ann Clemens and Andrea Reed and uh, Art Dyson uh, and Carol. And um, uh, they're all very excited to be here this evening with an application for a site plan review. Uh, very briefly, uh, there was a site plan review that was done on this site in 2001. Uh, it envisioned a 9,000 square foot facility or 9,000 square feet of buildings on the facility. Uh, I think at that point, uh, the Botanical Gardens was trying to get a handle on really what they wanted to establish out there. And this has uh, matured over a period of time. Uh, what they're bringing before you this evening is a, a 2,500 square foot visitor center. Uh, it includes a um, so a conference room or kind of a lecture room, uh, as well as an office, as well as um, an area that you can, uh, kind of a gift shop area. And it would provide the formal entry uh, from the public space into the Botanical Gardens. Uh, the Botanical Gardens uh, mission is to highlight uh, appropriate plant species that could be accommodated uh, throughout the community. As you're aware, we have a very unique environment here in the valley. You can grow a lot of crops very well. Sometimes those plants that you would like to place in your, um, in your regular gardens might not fit here. And particularly in a, in a water-wise environment, their mission is to try to portray attractive environments that you can do uh, with your residences uh, affordably um, in a very water-wise manner. Um, there are uh, a couple things that uh, I did want to address. Uh, this, this is a, uh, basically the footprint of the 2,500 square foot building. 
Uh, it's a very unique building. Um, I think if you go to the next image, um, most structures tend to celebrate the interior space. And when you walk into most buildings, um, it's about the building itself. This building is almost the antithesis, and I haven't talked to Art about that. I'm sure Art, Art being the designer, is bringing forth a vision of his own, uh, his own type. But what it impresses me as is that this is a building that celebrates the, the environment around it. And so you actually enter it at its, at its lowest point, and as you experience the building, it projects out into the garden itself. And I, I think it's a very, very attractive building and kind of a world-class building for this type of environment. Uh, it will enable the, uh, the botanical gardens to be able to uh, evolve, hopefully attract additional members and activity to the site, and uh, would be a, a very good face to the botanical gardens as viewed from the, uh, the park site itself. Uh, Lily did a great job in terms of identifying a couple conditions that uh, we certainly had concerns with. Um, there's, uh, we do have a donor. I will let uh, the botanical garden folks uh, discuss that. Um, but they're finite funds, and so they, they want to invest it responsibly. Uh, but I think the gardens also understand that there is a parking issue at this location. I think anybody that goes by and uses the park or the botanical gardens understands they may not be able to find a parking stall in that, in that lot to be able to get to where they want to go. Uh, the park is unique, however, in that it has a trail system that runs through it. Uh, it also has a, uh, a bus pullout uh, right at the, at the front of the botanical gardens and the park itself. And those two factors could come into play in terms of looking at some other opportunities uh, for parking. Uh, the, uh, the parking requirement is uh, one stall for every 5,000 square feet of active area, and that equates to both the park itself and to the botanical gardens. Um, I, I think the botanical gardens are unique in a manner that uh, they do provide a front setback. They provide landscape setbacks off the trail. There is a utility area that sits at the northern part of the park uh, that is really unusable. It's, it's there to provide decoration and to provide a setback to, you know, to a fence off of uh, the Clovis Avenue frontage. Uh, but it consumes about an acre in itself that doesn't really get used other than visually. Uh, so you end up with about uh, 3.1 acres of area within the botanical gardens itself. And on the site plan, if you look at that, about 25% of that is actually active area. Those are where the buildings are at, those are where the trails are at, but where there's landscaping, that's viewable, you don't actually go in there and utilize it as you would a park facility. And I think that's the parking requirements related more to a park and providing adequate parking for a park where every square foot is really an active area. This is a little bit different. Um, I ran kind of a quick calc based on 3.1 acres and about 25% of active area in there. And I get about six park or seven parking stalls based upon that. Um, this is what I'm showing there is the botanical garden area. And if, Lily, you go to the next slide, uh, it highlights, kind of back up a little bit, uh, you'll see an area at the uh, southeast corner of Knees and Clovis Avenues. Uh, that's where they do the, um, uh, the mulch giveaway annually. Uh, it's a city-owned piece of property there. Um, but it may have some ability to provide some parking spaces, not just for the botanical gardens, but maybe for the general community as well. Uh, I did have some conversations with public utilities. Uh, it's, it's not an idea that's entirely cooked, uh, but it may be a place that could provide a lot more parking uh, for park facility or park activities, uh, botanical garden activities, and maybe in a perfect world, actually getting a bridge across the a little dry creek that could connect, that connect that to the park and the botanical gardens. Uh, another opportunity is uh, we do have a uh, developing church site at the northwest corner of uh, Knees and Clovis Avenue. Because there is a bus stop right there in front of the uh, botanical gardens, there's a bus pullout. Uh, there may be some ability with larger functions to actually run a tram or some sort of facility using maybe their parking, their developed parking facility during off hours um, 
to be able to get people to and fund the bot botanical gardens, particularly during uh, major events out there. Um, I discussed this with staff. Uh, we're very happy with staff uh, providing some wiggle room in terms of looking at exploring some of these parking options um, as we progress forward to the city council, and we're very appreciative of that. Uh, the other uh, aspect is the, the trash enclosure. There is a request to expand the trash enclosure. Uh, the botanical garden does need, uh, they do have separate um, uh, trash services specific to their site. I think Public Utilities is looking for a place that they can actually park their bin. Uh, I, did, I did talk to the Public Utilities Director today, Scott Riddles, about um, uh, maybe some other alternatives that we could look at. and. Um, uh, staff has included as their condition some ability to look at maybe some alternatives as we move ahead so we're not just fixed with a trashing one or two solutions on the trash enclosure. Um, if we kind of go through the next uh, next slides here, you've, you've seen the elevations of the center. And that, that yeah, that may be the, the completion of my, my program. Um, I'll open it up, or I'd, I'd like to invite any member of the uh, uh, Botanical Garden to speak at this time. And then we do have a quick video of the, uh, of the center. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm open for any questions that the Planning Commission may have. I do, Dwight. Um, so we're asking for uh, I didn't write all the information down you said for the, par the parking, the condition. We um, revised it a little. But in that revision, um, are you asking to have less parking? Because it sounded that initially I think we were short like 38 parking uh, spots, Th 39. Mm -hmm. So are, is the recommendation or is the proposal going to be less than that? I, I think we, we'd like to have more discussion with staff on that. The, the 39 parking spaces equated to a previous site plan review that included 9,000 square feet of building mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to 2,500 square feet. And uh, we, we also think that the, uh, the parking equation really relates, it was really designed more for parks itself as opposed to botanical gardens. So we'd like to research that a little bit more. Um, Probably the critical issue for the botanical gardens is uh, there is a there is a donor out there. Um, there's a donation that will completely fund the building and some additional improvements, but there's a tipping point where they may not be able to build a project if the cost is too high. And so we're we're trying to kind of walk the razor's edge here a little bit, certainly recognizing there's a parking need or a parking demand and ability, and we need to address that somehow. Um, but if we can't build a project, we can't even address the parking. So uh, we'd like to have a little bit more conversation with the city on that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, open up to any supporters. I'm short here. <laughs> In case nobody noticed. Uh, I'm Ann Clemens. I'm the president of the garden. I live at 2331 Cromwell in Clovis. I've been volunteering with the garden since about 2005 because I believed in its mission and I knew it was a lot of work and it would keep me busy when I was retired. But I never thought that I would be president, but here I am. Uh, one thing, of course, in our climate, uh, at the first site plan review, we had a shade structure built, and that works fine for spring and fall. But when it's cold and when it's hot, then it's hard to have groups out at the garden meeting for education or fun or whatever. So this is why we wanted to build a building. And in, in addition to that, we wanted to increase the quantity and quality of the art that we offer for sale in the gift shop and increase the quality of the educational materials we have with the, you know, I'm sure there's some kind of computer you can push the button and see the garden and uh, walk your way around. We're working on that right now with the cell phone guide. 
we have one ready for the trees because we already had a tree guide, so now we need one for the garden, so we can uh, put that in there. <clears throat> We don't envision that both the pavilion and the visitor center will be rented at the same time. And so in that way, uh, the visitor center doesn't really add that much to the parking. Uh, I don't know if we want to get into parking or not, but <laughs> that's, that's not the time, uh, maybe not the time for it quite yet. We do park the, vis the volunteers park in that north area that is an awkward entrance, but we use it for maintenance. And it's big enough that, you know, somehow uh, Clovis Stone can manage to get in there and dump off stone and stuff, so it's not impossible to use it, but it's hard to see what traffic is coming on the, on the weekends, like you say, when there's parking all up the street, whether or not we, we have any event in the garden. In fact, when we have our plant sales, uh, and people are coming and going then, they aren't staying uh, for very long, but we usually rent the uh, uh, shade structures in the park uh, for that time so that we don't have an additional 500 people <laughs> there like we, we have had that too. So uh, parking is an issue and we need to work it out, yes. That we were talking about the the design of the building, and Art says uh, he was thinking of a butterfly with a butterfly's wing, and you know that is that is just right, because we have uh, recently added a milkweed garden, butterfly garden to the thing. We have sculptures out there, and that is what it looks like—a butterfly. <laughs> so we were glad about that. Uh, any questions for me? Or I have one. Mm -hmm. How often do you have your Twice a year. Twice a year. Okay. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and notice that it generates a lot of traffic for you too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it comes through. Andrea, how many people do we usually have? Yeah. It's half a day. They they come and go. I mean, you know, you sure. come in and you buy and you leave. So. Any other questions? For I would like to say, uh, in regard to funding, we did get a, a, a local uh, philanthropist <laughs> that donated a million dollars. We already had 400,000, so we had a million four, which is, we need to keep raising because of the inflation, I think, but, uh, and then we'll need to raise extra if we need to put in parking, so. Always need more money. <laughs> You know, we don't charge admission to go into the garden, so it's all donations and grants. So, any other questions? No. Anybody else want to say anything? No. Art. Oh yeah. Here, now here's the, here's the here's the thing that will really do this. The building would be available from neighborhood meetings. They have a place to go. The city would be able to uh, to use that because basically it's your building anyway. So anyway, anything else? Any other no. questions? Alrighty, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We do have a video um, of the walkthrough. If we can play that now.
very impressive. Thank you. Um, is there anyone uh, online to speak? There are none. Okay. And uh, anyone here in the chambers to speak against the project? Seeing none, any, anyone online? There are none. Okay, we'll bring it back to the commission then. Um, Mr. City Attorney, this is since we have a bare quorum. Um, is this the item that we must be unanimous on, or will it be the following item? For this item, the, an approval does not need to be unanimous. It just needs to be a majority of the quorum. But the other item is different. We can address it. All righty, thank you. Uh, comments from the Commission? I don't have a comment. I have a question for you, Lily. Um, on your previous slide, did you say that item 50 for the condition was also regarding parking? Or did I write that down? 50 was regarding trash enclosure okay. requirement. I was going to say, because it wasn't 50 meant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So number 10 is all that we have for the addendum or anything changes regarding parking going forward? Yes. Okay. And the city is fine with that in terms of giving them a year and working with them to adequately come up with parking alternatives or lower parking numbers? Yes, staff is uh, in agreement with that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Entertain a motion then? Um, I think it's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Um, so seeing that, I would like to request a motion to approve SPR 2001-018AA. Can you see that? Second. I have a motion by Commissioner um, Hatcher and a second by Commissioner Antuna to approve Site Plan Review 2001-018A2. Commissioner Antuna? Yes. Commissioner Cunningham? Yes. Commissioner Hatcher? Yes. And that was a unanimous approval in the quorum. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Mr. Dyson can put another feather in his cap. <laughs> uh, uh, you still down at the ice house? Okay. I remember your office is down there, but it's been a couple of decades ago. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll move on to item number two. We'll consider approval of... Uh, General Plan Amendment 2022-002, the request to amend the general plan to redesignate approximately 2.51 acres from the industrial classification to the office classification for a property located on the west side of North Clovis Avenue, immediately north of Freeway 168, City of Clovis, Appleton. The staff on this is Mr. Merchant, our city planner. Thank you, Chair Pro Tem and members of the Commission. Um, unfortunately, this next project is not nearly as interesting, nor does it have a cool butterfly building. But uh, I'm sure the Commission, just like me, loves all of the planning projects the same, and uh, you, will, you will treat it um, as such. The, uh, the project that we're looking at uh, with this general plan amendment was um, initiated by the City Council in order to correct basically what we're calling a mapping error and that was uh, made in conjunction with the adoption of the 2014 general plan uh, update land use map. The, the site in question is a little over two and a half acres. It's located um, on the west side of Cloven Ave Clovis Avenue just as it passes under Freeway 168. And the specific general plan amendment in question would change the site designation from industrial to office. And I'll give you some background on why we're proposing that. So the current general plan designation, as I mentioned, is industrial. That's the gray designation uh, that you see um, kind of on the broader uh, part of the map, um, including and in west of the area surrounded in purple. So the purple is the project site. So just, just remember that map now. The site is currently industrial, as is most of the area to the west. Uh, the zoning, on the other hand, uh, for the site is uh, CP or commercial professional. That's, that's primarily an office designation that allows uh, other compatible uses. Um, and uh, there's a mix of uses uh, surrounding the site, um, and we'll kind of get to that here in a minute. 
So as we look at consistency between the general plan and the zoning, um, with an industrial general plan designation and a commercial office zoning, uh, we've noted that those two uh, designations are not consistent with one another. And that came to light when we were working with the property owner on uh, what the submittal requirements would be for a commercial project on that site. And we discovered that um, because the two are not consistent, that, that would need to be rectified in order to uh, proceed with any commercial uh, project. So we dove into the background to kind of see if we could figure out why we, we got there. Uh, we went back and found that there were some previous approvals that affected this consistency issue. So we went back into the early 90s, and in uh, 1992, the council approved for this site a general plan amendment to designate the site for office, uh, professional office at that time. Uh, about a year later, uh, a matching zoning rezoning was approved, and that established the commercial professional or the CP zone district on the site. So in 92 and 93, um, those, those, the general plan and zoning designations were made consistent uh, for commercial or office use. And really the purpose of that was to prepare the site for the, the pending construction of Freeway 168, which kind of hugs the site just to its south. So the graphic you see there is the, uh, the, the real conceptual site plan that went along with the approvals in 1992 and 93. And there was kind of a generic um, office building that was conceived as, as going in um, about, um, I don't know, roughly on the, the southern half uh, or the southwesterly half of, of the overall project site. So those approvals occurred in 92 and 93, but nothing was ever constructed on that site. That office never came to fruition. And then we forward um, all the way up to 2014 when the city completed the, uh, the comprehensive update to its general plan. We adopted the land use map that, that's shown there on the screen. So that's citywide plus a, a really um, significant um, expansion area outside the, the city limits, including our sphere and even some area outside the sphere of, of influence. Um, so as best as we can tell, uh, when that comprehensive land use map was adopted, the, the little area shown here uh, circled by purple, including the project site, um, when we were painting our land use designations uh, with the general plan, we used what you might call a big paintbrush. We just established a logical land use patterns. And it looked like the, the big industrial area that's to the west, and you can see that really clearly here in this picture, um, that we just took in all of the vacant undeveloped property within that block and we just applied the, the industrial designation uh, onto the site. And um, we, we just didn't catch the, the fact that we had previously in 1992 and 93 established commercial office designations on, on the site. And uh, we weren't immediately sure whether that was intended or, or not. We thought that there was a possibility that we could have intentionally eliminated the, the commercial and office uh, designations. We went back and did a little more investigation. We talked um, actually with, uh, with Dwight about um, the, the planned land use and whether that change was, was intentional. And um, uh, without question, he said, no, it was, it was not intentional. It, we, we always intended uh, for that site just, just west, um, excuse me, just north of the freeway uh, to be a commercial site and preferably something that would be um, of an elevation high enough to rise above the elevated freeway section and kind of create a visual entry and exit point to uh, the, the Clovis City proper. So from that point, we understood that, that um, the, the specific designations that were established in 92 and 93 were errantly um, eliminated back with the general plan land use map. And for that reason, the, the council um, uh, directed staff to initiate this cleanup action. So we also looked at whether the office, um, you know, commercial office designations made sense today. Uh, the uses that are surrounding the site in, include uh, one single family home, uh, a multifamily duplex area, and then quite a bit of vacant industrial uh, land and um, obviously freeway 168. So on the graphic on the screen, the area that's kind of orangey brown is the residential, uh, existing developed residential areas. Uh, the uh, purple color is uh, vacant industrial land, and then obviously the site is kind of located in the middle. So in staff's analysis, we found that the office designation would serve as a buffer uh, between the residential properties uh, and the nearby freeway and industrial properties. And so the, the original intent of having a buffer between the freeway and um, adjacent residential 
although the context has changed a, a little bit, um, the the office uh, use continues to to be an appropriate um, land use designation to serve as a buffer on this site between the industrial area, the freeway, and, and the adjacent residential areas. For those reasons, um, staff uh, recommends that the council adopt a resolution that would recommend approval of the general plan amendment redesignating the site from the industrial to the office classification. And staff would be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions for Mr. Merchant? None. Seeing none. <clears throat> Anything online for questions? I guess I'm premature there, but that's <laughs> been. There are none at this time. Uh, in the audience, is there anyone wishing to speak to this item? For or against? Seeing none. Nothing online. Bring it back to the commission for discussion and action. Seeing no no discussion, I'm ready for a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve GPA 2022-002. Second. I have a motion and a second. Be kind enough to call the roll. Okay. I have a uh, motion by Commissioner Hatcher and a second by Commissioner Antuna uh, to approve GPA 2022-002. Commissioner Antuna? Yes. Commissioner Cunningham? Yes. Commissioner Hatcher? Yes. And, and the yes. item passes unanimously. Yes. And that was required to do, so it did. Uh, is there any final comments or questions from the Commission? Secretary, nothing. No. we'll adjourn the meeting then to May 26th at uh, 642. Nothing to it. Piece of cake.